Another edition of Warbird Wednesday. My name is Fred Bell. I am the vice chairman of the Palm Springs Air Museum. And today we're moving down Jet Trainer Road with the Fuji, the T1. Jason, you know what the Fuji is? Fuji is actually a milestone aircraft in Japanese aviation uh, construction post war. We're going to talk about it here, but first, really, what, what is this? This is ridiculous. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and toss it off camera. Oh, good catch by the Jason there. Now, we're gonna use a T-37 here, a tweet. I'll go ahead and throw up a plan view of this one and uh, Greg in the post can throw up the T-1, the Fuji. Now, the T-1 is a milestone aircraft in Japanese aviation production because uh, I will give you a little bit of a history lesson here. The Japanese after World War II were prohibited, as were the Germans, in any type of research and development uh, on any aircraft uh, post-war. They were not allowed to do it. Uh, the Allies had learned their lesson after the Treaty of Versailles, where Germany had kind of done a workaround and produced a lot of dual products. In other words, they had peacetime applications, but they were intended to be converted into uh, military aircraft. And so they said, no, 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 we're not doing that. So what ended up happening, and this was, by the way, with the concurrence of the United States, uh, really as a superpower at that point, I'm sure uh, the other allies were involved in consultation, but they lifted the design ban partially lifted it in 1952. And the reason for that was quite simple. What was Japan up against? They're up against the Soviet Union and the United States realized that both in West Germany, in Europe, and in uh, Japan and in, in uh, Asia and that area there, they needed a strong Japanese in order to be able to be a bulwark against the uh, Soviet expansion with the Americans allowing the Japanese to begin partial R&D on airframes, this aircraft popped out in 1958. So not that far off of it. Now the interesting thing, if you look at this airplane, in my view, and you can argue with me uh, in the comment section, it looks like an F-86, a two-seat F-86, but it is truly a Japanese aircraft. The Japanese did not have uh, they had not perfected uh, homegrown turbojet technology, so it was originally powered by, the first variants were powered by a Bristol Sydney uh, turbojet. The later variants were actually powered by a Japanese J3 turbojet. So they eventually did get to the point where they were building um, power plants, but in the early days, they weren't doing that. Now, originally, they thought they were gonna build about 200 of these things. The ultimate build ended up being about 66, so it was a very, very small run, and that leads me to my salute. And my salute today is to all of the intrepid Japanese aviators that actually came back from, it would be easy to be discouraged after World War II, you're basically locked out of the aviation industry. You know, Fuji is actually a successor company to Nakajima, which if you know Nakajima, Nakajima built some very potent fighters used during the war. And a lot of these heavy industry companies uh, after the war were just trying to figure out how to survive. Uh, Nakajima eventually morphed into Fuji but the Japanese stayed at it, and you have to uh, think that, you know, post-war, you got to give them a lot of credit. They rebuilt their society. They rebuilt it in a better fashion. Obviously, uh, they were no longer focused that the emperor was a god, and they were going to 
blindly follow uh, these military folks on these ridiculous adventures that got a lot of their folks killed, but they really focused on rebuilding the country. And their aviators were no different. So today, I'm going to salute them with, Jason has gotten really creative, a Renume, a naturally flavored strawberry flavor. Now this is one of these things where you have to put the stopper in there and actually push the, there's a marble in here that see, seals this. And you have to push this down. So let's see if I can technically master this. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Wow, that's pretty interesting. The marble's in there. You can do it now. It very nice aroma. Very strawberry. Mmm. That's actually really good, Jason. You're slipping. You are slipping. This is really good. 100 calories, not too bad. You can't drink the whole thing. A premium carbonated soft drink. So to the intrepid post-war Japanese aviation industry, I salute you. Mm. That's about all I'm going to get out of that. So um, the Kawasaki, another interesting name, built the successor aircraft, the T-4, and after that, the writing was on the wall for the, the T-1. Now, the interesting thing about the T-1 is it went on to be displayed prominently in Japan and ultimately retired. They're very proud of the airplane in uh, 2006. They went away. And remember, that was at that extremely low build rate. They only ended up building 66 of these. If you want to see one and you go on a tour of Japan, there are a number of them on display. I encourage you to do that. Um, it's too bad. This is an airplane that would be very interesting to be seen in the United States, but they've long since uh, you know, gone by the wayside. You're not going to get one of them over here. But it would be an, an interesting aircraft to look at. And with that... That is the status on the Fuji, the T1. Now, if you, it's Christmas is coming up, and for those of you that, like Jason, he, he loves these coloring books, he colors between the lines, uh, he's got this going. This is a amazing, famous airplanes coloring book. You can get this for one of your loved ones or someone that you think is only capable of coloring in this book, you should do that. It is absolutely fantastic. It's got a lot of really great airplanes in there, everything from props to jets. So go ahead and click on that link. We would love to have Jason print one of these off. He's not gonna do that, but he will send one out to you if you click on that link. Now we cannot, we're in the uh, B-17 hangar. We cannot do everything that we do at the museum without your contributions. And in this video down at the bottom, you'll see there's an opportunity to give us a little uh, contribution there. If you wanna send us some yen, some dollars, some pounds, whatever you wanna send us, go ahead and click on that link. If you came across us on Facebook or YouTube, give us a like, give us a subscription. If it's on YouTube, we really need those. That's how, how it drives the channel. If you have a comment, we love that. If you know people that like essentially one take Warbird videos with a little bit of production, Greg makes all the magic at home, then we will be happy to have you send that to somebody you know and give us, as I said, a like, a comment, a subscription. We appreciate that. If you are teaching the kiddos at home, in the links below also, there are free. Your mattress is free! I said free links to education guides. They do everything from teach the kids how to fly to the history lessons. And if you wanna either teach them a whole series of stuff or you wanna just do a couple of things at home so that they have something to do, some fun activities, those are your links. Go ahead and click on those and download to your heart content. My name is Fred Bell. I am the vice chairman of the Palm Springs Air Museum. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Three, two, one, end of that. King with a go.